sometimes when you just coast along. But like it or not, something always seems to go wrong. Sometimes people build you up just so they can knock you down. But sometimes they will have you there because they need someone around. Perhaps you'll receive invitations for tea. Or perhaps you will laugh and you'll make them all smile. Or maybe you'll join them because it had to be. Perhaps you'll forget that you forgot for a while. Birds of a feather are flocking outside. Birds... Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us. The show has an NL East matchup. It's the New York Mets and the Washington Nationals. Alongside my partner, Chris Singleton, I'm John Chompy. Thanks for joining us here. Pretty decent win streak on the line in this one, Chris. This team has been doing all the little things right now. Being able to hit in situations and hit with runners in scoring position. When you look over the course of a long season, if you're going to be successful, it's doing the little things right. Just about to get started and on the mound for Washington in this one, Josiah Gray. Chris, it's a little more common these days, but still, he's a strikeout per inning type of guy. Well, I hear you about the strikeouts. A lot more guys striking out today, but when you consider having the ability to get that strikeout, particularly when you need it, a man on third, less than two outs, situations where, yeah, maybe you're not a real high strike. And that's a fair ball down the right field line, and that's going to roll a while. And that's a leadoff double. First pitch swing in, went up there with a the plan to be aggressive. Ripped that one down the line and kept it fair. And even when you hit it that far out front, you still have to keep your hands tight to your body so you don't hook around that baseball and put it in foul territory. And that right there was perfect. And now the center fielder. Danny Mendick. That's ripped. Base hit. The throw in. In comes the first run of the game. It's 1-0 Mets. And he'll make it up to second as he advances on the throwing error. First pitch fastball in a great spot to do some damage. And he squared it up nicely. Jeff McNeil stands in, the top hitter in the National League entering the day. Entered the day with the best batting average in the National League. Runner leads away at second. Foul ball. Ground ball right side. Pinder slings to first. One out in the top of the first. And now it's Salvador Perez to the plate. Three for 11 in the series coming in. He's a guy who does it all with the lack of contact in today's game. This guy hits for contact, so he delivers average, but there's on base and slugging too. That one ran inside, almost got him. Early in the count, you have to be real careful because of that power. But then if this hitter gets a strike or two on him, he's still very comfortable. And because he has the ability to get the barrel to the baseball, he's a threat deep into the count as well. Swing and a pop-up. Foul out of play off to the right side. That'll find the stands. The 1-1. And there's a ball. In the air, center field. 
And they get Perez for the out. Runner tags from third. The throw is offline, and he's in to score. It's 2 nothing. So many times that one gets out of here and into the seats, but he'll take the sack fly RBI. Good job to get that run in from third. And now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonzo. Two homers in the game yesterday, so he's feeling good coming in. And yeah, that's outside. 1 and 0. Oh. Swing and a miss as he was late that time. Wow. Good luck catching up to that one. Swing and a ground ball out to short. On to Chavis. And that takes care of Alonzo. Third out, and that ends the frame. But two runs for him, and they jump ahead. On to the bottom of the first. It's the Mets two, and the Nationals nothing. Back here at the ballpark, and on the hill in this one, Kodai Senga. Lots of punch outs, a real strikeout artist, Singy. Well, he got into the eighth inning his last time out, really pitching deep in the games as of late. We'll see today how many innings he's got in him. And now up for Washington, Victor Robles. And a pitch. And a foul ball. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. That one missed. 0-2 fastball way out of the zone. I think he's trying to speed him up. Got to stay back. Off speed's probably coming. Swing and a bouncer. Toss to Alonzo. One up, one down. Here's Dickerson now. Fastball, and he gets out of the way. Swings and pulls it foul to the right side. One down, base is empty. Chopper, right side. Sends it to first, and the home first moving along quickly today. Two gone. Two outs, base is empty. And now it's Kiebert Ruiz. And first offering is fouled off. Kicks and deals. Into the outfield, base hit. So he gets on base and keeps it going. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. There's nothing cheap about the way he got that one through the infield. That was ripped, caught out in front, and didn't get under it like he would have liked, but definitely put a good swing on it. The pitch. To the right side. He handles it himself, inning over. So one left for Washington. They trail it here, 2-0. Back in Washington, D.C., here's Francisco Lindor. This guy is a threat from both sides of the plate. The wind of the pitch. And first offering is fouled off. Singy, where are you on F1 racing? Are you a fan? Haven't gotten there yet, but I will at some point. Francisco Lindor, a big fan of F1 racing. His favorite driver is Lewis Hamilton. The 0-2. Stays alive. The 0-2. Line drive, base hit. So a runner aboard to start the inning. 
I'd say a mistake pitch in an 0 2 count. Too good of a pitch to hit right there. You have to expand the zone, keep that leadoff man off first base. Man at first, A. Eugenio Suarez, the next to hit. Didn't play in last night's game. A little breather for him. Swing and a miss. And it's 0 oh. 1. And a pitch. Ball one there. Dave Lawrence assigned to work home plate in this one. Good umpire, Boog. Very fair, very consistent. Now, I did hear some feedback that he opens up the outside corner a little bit on left-handed hitters, which, you know, for me, I'd be kind of salty. So maybe something to keep an eye on and see if that factors into this one at all. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. How much were you aware of the umpire scouting report or even who was going to be umpiring? Not a whole lot. I mean, there were a couple of umpires that weren't real good, but outside of that, you just kind of went into the game, especially back when I was playing. At the belt and fires. Swings and misses. Gassed it right by him. And now it's Travis Darno at the plate. Swings through that one. 0-1. Oh, one, oh, one. Lindor stands at first with one out. One one. Pitch out, but no action. Righty delivers. Swing, and that ball smashed on a line. And makes the grab. And there's two away. Man, he smoked that fastball. He's all over it. It's just frustrating when you can't get it to fall. Maybe next time up, he'll find a hole. Nelson Cruz up now for the Mets. A big factor in the series with six RBIs on six hits. Fouled off. He was late. A one down. Swings through that one oh, out in front that time. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. Mets leave one, but they hold the 2 nothing lead. And welcome back. We head to the bottom of the second, and now it's switch hitting third baseman Jamer Candelario. There's a strike. Senga. He has a reputation. I don't know, maybe a knack for working himself out of tough situations that he finds himself in. You know, you like that in a relief pitcher, but when you have it for a starting pitcher, a guy that can get out of a tight spot, that is pretty valuable. And you won't see the skipper rush to get somebody up in the bullpen as soon as he starts to see some signs of trouble. This guy's earned a longer leash, and because of that, confidence grows with the players and teammates playing behind him that when things get a little rough out there, they know he'll find his way through it. Next to hit for the Nats, Ildemaro Vargas. No hit to the shutout yesterday afternoon. And that's in there for strike one. How much of the ability to do that in a tight spot is the mental approach? I think it's very much. Being able to have a laser-like focus, slow everything down, stay right in that moment, pitch to pitch, execution, and focusing on that catcher's mid. Here's a one-two. Line drive, base hit. Good two strike hitting right there Boog a bit of a lost art for some so that was nicely done to beat the odds nice line drive to the pull side right there but he didn't spin off of it that's the key you still have to extend through the baseball in order to hit a line drive like that Michael Chavis in the box here lets that one go for a ball center field Mendick drifts towards it and puts the squeeze on it that's out number two. Batting it. 
Here's Lane Thomas. Four hits and 11 tries so far in the series. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Kicks and fires. Good eye right there. Swing and a miss. And a pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. The high heat, too much on that one. Nationals leave one. They trail things here, 2-0. Back here in Nationals Park, top half of the third inning. Here's the Mets' leadoff man, Stephen Kwan. Stephen Kwan is making a name for himself. He won the College World Series playing at Oregon State. He played along with Adley Rutschman and Nick Madrigal, and he took home a gold glove his first year in the majors, 2022. I want to talk about a guy who makes great contact. Hard to throw it past him. He does not swing and miss very often. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. Yes, yeah, Singy, he went 116 pitches before his first swing and miss in the majors. Amazing. Swing and a miss struck him out. Oh, that's a curveball that people like to describe as a hammer or Uncle Charlie, and you can see why. It's not a looping slow curve. He throws it hard, and it gets plenty of bite on the end. Danny Mendick up now for the Mets. Talk about tying a guy up. That was ugly. Mende measures 5 feet 10 inches, 195 pounds, and he's usually a shortstop, but today he's starting in center. Right-hander kicks deals. There's a swing and a drive. Back there. Makes a leap and grab for the out. Well, typically your best talent is up the middle from pitcher, shortstop, center fielder. And so no surprise that he's made the move from shortstop to center today. And now here's Jeff McNeil. He's 0 for 1. Swing and a ball hit out towards left center field. And that is the third out of the inning. Down in order go the Mets. But they're on top 2-0. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Chad Pinder now. The right-hander back to work. Pinder starting up the middle at second, hitting ninth in today's lineup. And he was a second-round pick back in 2013. And the right-hander deals. And that one a little bit high. That misses, and the count is two and two. Pender checks his swing. Now an appeal to first, and he held back according to Ricky Holiday. Three two on the way. Fights it off, he'll see another. The pitch. This to center field. Mendick sizing this one up. Puts it away for the out. Here's Victor Robles. Grounded out his first time. In there for strike one. Right through there for a strike. All right, now, he may have not liked either of those first two pitches or agreed with the umpire's calls, but at this point, he's going to have to bear down and be ready to hit anything close to the zone. And there's two down. Here's Corey Dickerson. He's over one. Dickerson, a former All-Star, a member of the 1,000-hit club. He joined the team as a free agent. Next offering is in for a strike. 
That one missing inside. That's a really good take right there. Slider down and in. Very difficult to get on the same plane and do anything with. Got him. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. Nationals go quietly. And they're down 2-0. Welcome back. John Chambi with Chris Singleton and set to lead off the fourth, Salvador Perez. Gray back to work. And that one is inside. So two balls and no strikes. When you get ahead in the count, there's no doubt that the success rate goes up. And that's what he's been doing. It's made a big impact for him in recent games. Now three and oh. He hasn't fallen behind in the count like this all day. He's in danger of walking his first batter right here. But why the kick the pitch? Swings and misses. And now three balls and a strike. This to third. And they get Perez for the out. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Here's Pete Alonso. 0 for 1. He grounded out in his first at bat. That one ripped. Pete Alonso takes him deep. His 16th homer of the year, and they boost their lead. It's 3-0. Chris, he's homered in back-to-back -back games now. Yep, seeing the ball well, and he's got his timing locked in. He's looking pretty dangerous at the dish right now. A good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over-anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got all of it. Francisco Lindor comes up to the plate. Hit weakly on the ground. Vargas whips it to first on the run. Lindor retired. You know, that looks routine, but it hasn't been so easy for this club defensively this year. And you got to make those routine plays behind a pitcher. It helps him to get more comfortable and move through this ballgame. Hey, Eugenio Suarez is up to the plate now. That hits the dirt. Ball one. And he chases a high fastball there. The baseball is coming out of his hand very well. He's been able to paint all four corners, but really good ride at the top of the zone. Hitters have to respect that. Very difficult pitch to hit. Ripped to third, but handled, and that'll end the inning. One scores in the inning coming on this solo home run. It's now 3-0. You're watching Mets baseball on the show, NYC. Bottom of the fourth, and here's the catcher, Hebert Ruiz. And he deals. And a big swing and a miss. All one's the count. That one's in there. No balls, two strikes. Just missed. I don't know how you take that one after the called strike on the corner. Just a little bit off the edge. Next pitch in the dirt. And yeah, that's ball two. In the air, left field. Quan settles underneath it. Makes the grab one down. Now it's going to be Alex Call. Over one so far. And first offering is fouled off. Righty to the plate. On the ground, right side. McNeil gets it to first. Already two gone here in the home four.
Now batting Jamer Candelario. Splits the plate. Going one. And that's in for a strike. Next offering is down low. Gonna count one and two. Yeah, the one two misses to even the count. Here's a 2 2. Battling here as he fouls it away. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Some high cheese for strike three. Nothing doing for Washington. They trail it here 3 0. All set for the start of the inning. Here's the catcher for the Mets, Travis Darno. The wind of the pitch. Swing and a pop-up. Pinder has a beat on it. And there's one away. That was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate. Had pretty good timing on it. Just got underneath it a little bit and popped it up. At the plate, Nelson Cruz went down on strikes his first time through. Out to short, Vargas. Gathers and throws to first. And a couple of quick outs. Now, the left fielder, now the left fielder Stephen Kwan. He's kind of an outlier, especially when guys are consciously sacrificing contact to deliver power. On the ground, right side, Chavis. He steps on the bag, and that'll do it. And the Mets go down one, two, three. But they lead it three nothing. Back here at the ballpark, digging in, Ildemaro Vargas. Here comes a pitch. Slap the other way, foul. Yeah, his swing is so good. It's in the zone a long time. He gets the barrel to it a lot, and that produces more base hits. And it drops in. And the leadoff man aboard. And now it's Michael Chavis. Hit it well, but flied out to the deepest part of the outfield his first time. That one's in there. That's strike one. Singy, one of the things that's interesting is that guys really don't worry about swing and miss from an offensive standpoint anymore. So when you see somebody who contacts the ball like this, do you think of that as plus value? Absolutely. If he's doing damage now, if he's rolling over and, and grounding out, then it's a different story. But yeah, if he can put the ball in the gaps or over the fence, 100%. Next offering upstairs. Yeah, and the domino effect of that is running up pitch counts on pitchers and then either get... Steps on the bag for one. The tag, and they He's get him at second. That's a double play. Pretty lengthy at bat right there, and usually the hitter wins that battle after seeing so many pitches, but instead the exact opposite, or maybe even worse than that, grounds into a double play. Tough at bat to swallow. One of the things that Jim Leland used to say when I was broadcasting with the Marlins, the longer a plate appearance goes for a batter, the more likely it is that something good will happen for the hitter. Ball to strike. The pitch. There's the strike. Can't glove it cleanly. But in time, nice job to stay with it to end the inning. Yeah. Back in Washington, D.C., top of the sixth inning, and stepping in for New York, Danny Mendez. 
and a pitch. Yeah, and I figured you would get Kotze into this because you had a free dinner at his house the other night. That is true. You'll won. Now wanted a one. Swing and a miss. And a count one and two. The pitch. And now two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Into center and a base hit. That pretty much split the zone down the middle, and those are the ones where you got to make them pay. Manager out of the dugout now, and he'll make a move to dip into the Nationals' pen. Josiah Gray, done for the day. We'll be back in a minute with a new arm on the mound. On to pitch now for the Nationals, Paolo Espino. He's got a wicked breaking ball in his arsenal, and it's definitely one of his go-to pitches when he needs an out. So digging in, Jeff McNeil. McNeil, 30 years old now, and he was selected to the All-Star game last year. Two now. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. Well, you rarely ever see three curveballs in a row because that's one of those pitches that's most effective when you haven't seen it recently. You might see three sliders in a row, but right there, he was feeling that curveball and figured he could finish with that pitch. And next is the designated hitter, Salvador Perez. He's a catcher by trade, but the DH here in this one. And there's the strike. Oh, Good down. pitch right there. Anytime you can get one by a bat of this caliber, especially with runners on, it's got to give you some confidence out there on the mound that you can win this battle. Mendick, the base runner at first with one out. Hammered on a line to the left, base hit. They fired in quickly. So it's first and second with only one away. Now batter, the first baseman. Pete Alonzo up now for the Mets. Alonzo hitting better against right-handers this year, so some reverse splits there. And the first oh, offering is not close. One out. Runners at first and second. Up the middle. Nice stop. There's one. Double play. What a twin killing to end the inning. So no runs. Two hits. No errors. And one man left. 9-1 and 2 scheduled to hit in the home half of the sixth. It's the Mets three and the Nationals nothing. And welcome back. Bottom of the six. And now Chad Pinder. Senga back to work. And takes low for ball one.
right side. Makes the catch, and there's one gone. So the batting order turns over, and now it's Victor Robles up to hit. Bunt's attempt, but that goes foul. Well, you can't really adjust your game plan for that last pitch. Guy hasn't thrown it very much. you got to focus on the stuff that he's throwing up there most of the time. To first, two up, two down. Corey Dickerson digging in for the Nationals. That one's in there, 0 and 1. Well, as good as things can be, it can be a tough day at the office, even for the skippers. Seeing the offense just sputter, not able to get anything going. And the 0 2. Hammer, base hit. Back against the wall with two strikes, but found a way. Off the bat, it was headed for the gap all the way. And as a hitter, you love seeing those as you take your first couple of steps out of the box. You know you've got some real estate to run on. It's such a good feeling. Nice liner into the gap right there. Next offering is in for a strike. And he takes a strike. Two balls, two strikes to count with two outs. And here it comes. Just a slow ground ball this time. Toss to Alonzo. Out number three. So one left for Washington. Still down, three nothing. here in Nationals Park. Now it's the shortstop, Francisco Lindor. The shortstop, Francisco Lindor. The pitch. Now this is in the air down the line. Robles under it. Puts it away for the out. Woo. He was all over that first pitch fastball. Just barely missed it. Man, this guy was ready to hit. Hey, Eugenio Suarez up to hit down. He is very much your typical power hitter. I'd say he falls into the three true outcomes category. Well, we've seen more and more of that lately. The ability to drive the ball to slog is getting heavily favored over any discipline or strikeout concerns. Swing and a miss. And it's 0-2. A lot of times you'll see a pitcher maybe double up on a pitch. This guy will throw it three times, four times in a row because hitters just can't lay off of it. Next offering in the dirt. And that's ball one. That's down and in. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Right-handed reliever. That's a laser base hit. Everything came together perfectly for him right there. Fastball pretty much middle-middle, and that's what you fall asleep dreaming about as a hitter. So no surprise, he put a great swing on it. Runner on at first with one gone. And now the catcher comes up to him. Travis Darno. There's the swing and a miss. And the 01. Ground ball left side could be two. Steps on the bag for one. What a double play that was. Inning over. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left. Midway in inning number seven, and it's time to stretch. It's the Mets three and the Nationals nothing.
welcome back. Bottom of the seventh. And here's the DH for Washington. Alex Call. And a pitch. Just missed. Count one and oh. Swing and a line drive. Base hit out of the center field. So up next, Jamer Candelario. And the first pitch misses for ball one. If you're going to get something going, this is the time to do it. You get the leadoff man on. Everybody's got to look. Lindor, that's one. Over to Alonzo. Double play. Sometimes double plays get turned so quickly that you don't really get to appreciate all of the finer details and how these guys execute them. Right there, really nice footwork and a good feed to second was the key to pulling it off. And the batter will be the shortstop, Ildemaro Vargas. There's a strike. Usually when a pitcher's had a dominant outing, he has filled up the strike zone and he's gotten ahead in the count with first pitch strikes. Well, that's exactly what this guy has done in this one. Over 70% first pitch strikes. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. Foul ball still 0-2. Two down, nobody on. Ball one low. Line drive. He's got it. And that is out number three. Back here at the ballpark. Now it's the right fielder, Nelson Cruz. With this kind of lead, he can swing freely, try to hit the ball out of the park, do what he loves to do. And a pitch. There's a strike. Wow. That's not even close to the zone. And a pitch. And strike two. Real ugly 0-1 swing right there. As a pitcher, got to be hunting for that strikeout. Keep him off balance. Send him back to the dugout. That one down the line. And foul ball. In the dirt. Tosses to first. Lead off man is out here in the eighth. Got him out on the front foot. Couldn't keep the hands back long enough and played right into the hands of the pitcher. And that one is lifted in the air. Robles settles under this one. Hauls it in, and there's two away. Maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit. Couldn't quite barrel it up enough to really drive it. Danny Mendick up now for the Mets. Good swing out of him last time. Ripped a liner in the center. Up the middle, Vargas. Tosses to first, and that's the third out. Mets go down quickly, but they're on top by a count of three to nothing. Ready for the bottom of the eighth. Up now for Washington, Michael Chavis. The Nets in striking distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the laid off man. I need a good at bat out of him right here. The pitch. And one ball up. one. Chavis drafted. It has a shortstop. Manager out of the dugout, and he's going to make a change. Kodai Senga gives way, and he was very good. They'll be happy with that, no doubt. We'll be back with a new pitcher in a minute. Drew Smith gets the call from the pen. Got to keep things airtight defensively right here. On your toes, ready to make a play. If you can get this to the ninth with a three-run lead, it should be a W. At the belt and fires. That one fouled off. Kicks and deals. Hard hit left side. Lindor on the first. 
And that's one away as the leadoff man is out in the eighth. Lane Thomas digging in for the Nationals. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Well, in this one, the offense has sputtered. Somebody's got to find a way to get on, keep the line moving, and manufacture at least one run. Then maybe you get two or three. He caught it behind his back, and they get the out. Couple of pitches and a quick out. Here's the second baseman, Chad Pinder. In the air, right field, Cruz settles underneath it, makes the catch, and that ends the inning. And the Nationals gone in order. They trail in this one, 3 nothing. Now on the mound for the Nationals, Kyle Finnegan. And this could be a pretty critical point in this game. They're hoping he's the guy to keep them within striking distance. And now Jeff McNeil. And this is very likely the last chance he gets to keep his hitting streak alive. The pitch. And he grounds one to the right side. Pinder in plenty of time to first. And a quick out number one. Now it's the DH. Salvador Perez. One for two. Finnegan measures six feet two inches 195 pounds and he was a sixth round draft pick look oh, out oh, almost oh, got him upstairs straighten him up a little bit right hander kicks deals on the ground and that chance handled Whips it to first. Fine play in the hole for the out. Good arm side run and sink on that pitch right there. Got inside on him and got him to bounce into that out. Two outs, space is empty. Pete Alonzo up now for the Mets. He's already homered in this game. Well, in their win last game, this guy came up with two home runs. Obviously trying to keep the roll going here in this one. And first offering is fouled off. Two outs. Can't glove it cleanly. But they get the out at first, and that'll do it for the inning. Three up, three down for him there. To the bottom of the ninth we go. Top of the order, two up. It's the Mets three, and the Nationals nothing. Back in Washington, D.C., and now the right fielder, Victor Robles. This is a guy you got to keep an eye on when he digs in. Definitely been known to drop a drag bunt from time to time, and he's pretty good at it, Chris. Yeah, and he creates a, a sense of urgency for the defense because of the speed, because of the ability to put down that bunt. Yeah, the pitch is in for a strike, and it's nothing in two. Just misses with that one. Now you see even sluggers from time to time try and use the bunt really as a way to beat the shift. Kicks and fires. Foul ball still a one and two count. And he deals. And down on strikes. And one gone. Now the number two hitter, Corey Dickerson. One for three. Ball one, no strikes. And the righty deals. That one the other way. And a base hit into left field. That'll play. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. One gone, runner at first. 
And now the switch hitting catcher, Hebert Ruiz. And a good fastball to start him off at strike one. And a good eye there. Oh, he's really working him away this at bat. Sometimes take a little bit off velocity. Try to get a rollover, something on the ground. Stay away from that big hole on the right side of the infield. In there. And so now one and two. Dickerson at first, one gone. And that one hit 97 on the gun. You usually are going to see that inside fastball a little longer coming in from the opposite side, but that pitch really got in on him right there. I mean, that's a well-thrown pitch. Tough to do anything with that in terms of getting the hands through and the sweet spot of the bat to the baseball. Call. Stands in now and watches strike one. That misses, and the count is one and one. Good eye right there. Riding to the plate. There's a strike. And a swing and a miss, and that is the ball game. The ball for his first career save deserves to be on display at his house. I mean, it's kind of like when a restaurant frames its first dollar bill somewhere on a wall. You just can't forget your first save. A shutout in this one, 3 0, our final score. And the road team picks up the win and picks up a sweep. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show, thanks for stopping by. I'm John Chomby. Talk to you soon. Champions, champions, champions. My view from the top of the moon. I can see the whole world sitting in my hand. Amazing view. We finna break the rules, and we gon' make them too. I can't fall asleep. I gotta stand tall. That's what a leader do. Follow me, I'm leading you. Hey, we finna turn up, crank up the heat and hell, they finna burn up. Told them I'm coming, I'm here. Tell them they time up. I said it once, I'ma say it again. This here be my year. I ain't gon' show no fear. I know that I'm built to a quilt for what God want me to do. I'm number one, not the two. They don't know where I'ma lose. I hate to struggle, but it made me harder. I made it far, but I wanna go farther. This not for me. This for my son and my daughter, my family. The final line score for this afternoon's ball game for the victorious New York Mets. Uh, on seven.